Hi everyone, it's Eddie here at Eddie Makes Art. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm gonna to show you some cool, really simple techniques to create some wonderful textures and patterns on your gel plate. First layer I'm doing is the Cerulean Blue from Windsor Newton. And as you can see there on the left of my plate, I have um, the texture or impression plates that I made in a previous video. So I'm gonna use that on this first print. These are very easy to make. I made these on uh, pieces of cardboard using stencils and texture paste. For this next part, what I'm doing is I'm gonna use a straw and some iridescent bright gold paint from Liquitex and water. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow the paint all around the plate to create different cool designs. The next thing I'm using is the Antique Bronze Distress Paint by Tim Holtz. And this paint in particular is water reactive. So it's gonna work really well for this um, process. And what you'll see up close is that when I start blowing, it creates these really cool shapes. And then I'll add more water and that's going to help activate that distress kind of feel and give this print a really, really cool vibe. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of titanium white that I've um, watered down just a little bit because I'm almost out, but I want to extend it. And then I'm gonna just use my brayer and just kinda move it all around. I allow it to dry completely. That's important because there's a lot of different layers going on there. I'm gonna use this light blue permanent acrylic from Liquitex and it's a nice heavy body paint so it will do a good job of picking up the layers on the plate, plus giving us a nice bright background to push all those cool textures and, and, and shapes into the foreground. I like to use the wet strength tissue to pull prints off the gel plate because it's nice and strong. Um, and also if I use it on mixed media projects, it's a thinner uh, paper to work with. flip this over so you can see what it looks like. And I don't have it on a regular plate, a plexiglass, so I'm using this little flipper to flip it, but that's gonna look really good. I let this print dry about, yeah, probably 24 hours on the plate, and I'm taking my time pulling it because sometimes it can stick on the edges, so you wanna make sure you, you know, soften up those edges and kind of crack them up. And already I can see I'm getting these really cool cracks left behind on the plate. And that really awesome because you can use that to your advantage on another print. Look at that. That is fantastic. It's nice and grungy and it's got a lot of shine and texture. Definitely a winner. For this next one, I'm gonna use some transparent burnt umber Liquitex acrylic ink. 
and it's really fun to use. Um, I'm using my five by seven gel plate and I'm just dropping some of the ink onto the plate, bare plate, and then I'm adding some micaceous iron oxide and it's a golden fluid acrylic that has some mica in it. So it's got like uh, a texture to it, which is wonderful. And then I hit it with a little bit of water and then wiggle it around with my brayer and just try to create different um, textures and, and stuff by you know rub, rubbing it, rolling it, tapping it, whatever I gotta do. Next, I'll use the straw to blow the paint around the plate and create different uh, movement and uh, lines on the plate. Now I'm gonna add uh, some drops of the Distress Paint in Crushed Olive. I just took the end of a paintbrush here, or the handle, um, and just going around making squiggles and marks and doing all kinds of stuff. You can see how it translates. You know, this is what you're gonna see when you pull your print. Now I'm gonna add some titanium white again to this one and spray a little bit of water on. And again, I'm just going to move it around and make some different shapes. And I'm using the straw. Unfortunately, I did it off, I wasn't in frame, so it's kind of, you know, off, but um, I'm using the straw to blow out different shapes and uh, move the paint all around. The next color I'm adding is Tarnish Brass, and it's another Distress Paint by Tim Holtz. And I have uh, let that last layer dry, so this next layer is going onto the plate over dry paint. And again, I'm going to uh, spray with, with water and um, watch what happens. See the water starts to make the paint uh, spread and make little cells and pockets and um, give you some really cool, cool things going on. Now that this is finally dry, I'm gonna use the Amsterdam graphite paint as my final pull color. It's an opaque paint, but it's a metallic, so we'll still get some shine going. Um, but it's a thick enough paint where it's gonna pull the print nicely. And that's what you want when you're printing various layers of paint and you wanna pull it. You're gonna need uh, something that is a thicker than uh, uh, a fluid paint. That's in my experience on gel plating. And this one I'm just picking up on just plain copy paper. I'm doing a couple of different papers in this video. Um, so I have them for, you know, so I have options when I'm doing different projects. What I'm doing here is I'm pushing on the edges gently all around and it's, we call it cracking the edges. And what that does is it releases the stuck paint that's along all the edges because if you don't do that and you start to pull, that paint will uh, either rip and mess up your paper or it can also um, it just not um, pull off the plate. 
and you'll just have a mess. So um, always try and do that with the edges and, you know, push them, give them a little gentle push and help you release it better. This guy is really stuck. So I'm taking my time pulling it and just gently pulling it back little by little. And you can see there's some stuff left behind on the plate, but most of it has come up. So I'm very happy about that. Look at that. I really like that. All right, let's go to the next print. For this one, I'm what I'm doing first is I'm taking a bottle of paint that I have that's almost empty. It's a soft body acrylic in uh, dioxazine purple. It's made by Liquitex. And what I'm doing is I'm adding water with a pipette little by little to kind of use up what's in there and not waste the paint. But also it gives you cool effects on the gel plate. Make sure you shake the bottle up well too to get everything nicely mixed before you start using the paint. After I add the purple onto the plate, I'm gonna spray it with a little bit more water to give it more uh, movement on the plate. smushing this around and moving it around with the brayer gently and tapping and rolling. This is brush pewter. It's another distress paint from Tim Holtz. Um, and I just, I love the, the, the color combo of silver and uh, purple. I just think it's a really great combo. And another easy tool that comes in very handy when you're gel printing is the silicone I guess it's called a brush, but it's, it's flat silicone and it's got a nice edge to it. And it's, it won't do any harm to your gel plate because it's very soft and they clean up very easily. And I'm just moving that all around, making different shapes and designs. This layer has to dry completely before I go on to the next one. For the next layer, I'm adding a thin layer of the Liquitex Iridescent Graphite because I just think it's a really cool color. Spraying it with a little bit more water. And then I'm gonna add some golden fluid acrylic. And this is the iridescent gold and fine. And what it does is it adds, it blends with the paint, adds this like shimmer of gold. It's an interference paint, by the way. That's why it does that.
So I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll pull it with another color. To pull the print, I decided to use this uh, PVO paint that is iridescent blue violet and it's awesome. I just picked it up at the art store and I love it. Look at how shiny and like just bright that is. And it's gonna work really well with that, the top layer of the purple and the silver. see what this looks like. This print also sat for a day on the plate. For this next print, I'm using the Iridescent Bronze Fine Paint from Golden Acrylics. And it's a great, great paint because when you spray it with water, it starts to separate. And it separates into the original colors. And watch what happens. it pulls out this greenish um, patina looking color. And it's so, so cool. You can see here as I put the paper behind the plate for you. Fantastic. This next layer, I'm gonna use some iron oxide black from Lucas Krill. And I'm going to do um, some crackling. And after, so after I lay down the paint on the plate, I'll take a piece of tissue paper and scrunch it up and um, just tap it on the plate over and over to create some uh, crackling. For the pickup color, I'm gonna use the turquoise blue from Liquitex Basics. And if you've ever used this paint, you know it dries very quickly. And if you've never used it and you wanna use it, it's a great paint, but it does dry very quickly. So keep that in mind when you're using it. Uh, from what I understand, blue paints tend to dry quicker than other paint colors, but it's a beautiful, beautiful color. And I'm hoping it just gives it this really like nice background for all that brassiness and, 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 and crackling to show through. For this print, I'm using regular white paper um, and I'm gonna flip it over here so you could see 
how awesome that's gonna look. It's gonna be so good. After letting that sit for a good five hours, I went ahead and pulled it. And for some reason, I did it with camera in one hand and tried to pull it with the other hand. Not easy to do. But I wanted to show you what it looked like. That's what it looks like as it came off the plate. And it is one of my favorites, definitely. All right, let's do one more print. And this one is gonna be a beauty. And I'm using transparent burnt sienna, which is watered down, because I'm almost out. And then I'm adding some of that ink that I used earlier in the, I think it's burnt umber. It's transparent burnt umber acrylic ink. And I'll add drops to that on top of this paint that's already on the plate and then mix it up. And for this part, I'm gonna use the silicone brush again to move everything around and create different shapes and, and, and sort of textures. Next, I'm gonna add some uh, sparkle. I'm gonna use the mica spray from Tim Holtz and um, let that all dry. I'm coming back in with some gold paint. This is uh, one of my favorite gold paints. It's the Lucas Krill Studio Gold. And I'm gonna hit it with some water and allow it to start to separate a little bit. Next step, I'm just gonna use the handle of the brush and make scribble marks all over the print. Now, while this is still wet, I'm taking some ice blue metallic paint and I'm gonna brush it in and try and just fill in some of those empty areas and then also just mess it up a little bit and give it some more interest. Let's see what it's gonna look like. Hmm, that's gonna be an interesting one. Now, when you have this many layers of paint on the plate and you need to pull it, use a heavy body paint. I'm using the beige from Lucas Curl Studio 
and it's a great paint to pick up um, layered prints. Now this print, I did allow to sit on the plate for um, a day, about 24 hours, so I could get a nice clean pull. Isn't that great? Oh. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today while I made some uh, awesome uh, textured prints. And I hope you got some uh, good lessons. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Bye.